Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review an Enki C800 uh, 4K PoE network camera or IP camera and this is the second time I'm reviewing an Enki camera I think about six months ago we reviewed a C500 so this is the newer version and um, I mean, nowadays, what newer version means is, is we are going from the HD to the 4K resolution. So this is a 4K camera. And just like the previous model, where for a particular line, you can pick whether you want the bullet or a dome or a turret size camera, the same applies here as well. But uh, besides this form factor, this is, uh, um, I would say, probably like, um, in, in some sense, an entry line camera in the 4K line because it doesn't have a zoom or a motorized mount. So this is just a manual mount. You are going to fix it the way you want. Uh, there are some fr friction fitting, uh, so you can just move the camera into the position that you need, and it's just going to stay there. But nevertheless, if you search for C800, you will be able to find other models which either contain zoom or they have uh, full PTZ functions. So again, it is a whole range of uh, different products that we are going to see later. And I think what I'm going to do in this video is uh, I'm just going to do a brief introduction of this model and I would uh, also go through the features that it offers on the, uh, you know, the built-in uh, web interface so you can tell whether it has all the features that you need. And I think I'm going to focus more on the actual integration which I'm going to be doing with Node-RED. So if you search for C800 and uh, just pick the basic model um, in a sense that it doesn't have, you know, motorized uh, uh, movement or zoom or anything, then you are seeing these style of cameras. I mean, I have uh, this turret version, but as I said, you can uh, purchase the bullet version if you like that one or the dome version. So they are all going to be manual. The, the, basically, the, the, the cover is different. And also you can do several shipping options and you can buy either one or maybe four cameras together if you need. And you can see the prices up here. And uh, if you look at some of the other cameras in the C800 um, line, then you would see that you'll start to pay more money if you want uh, either the PTZ functionality or the zoom function. But still, this uh, already gives you a lot of uh, really good features. So we are getting 4K resolution. There is a night vision, which is uh, 400 meters, sorry, 100 feet. Uh, the field of view is 124 degrees uh, and uh, we have the IP67 rating. So this is obviously rated for outdoors. It uses a 4K Sony sensor, so the picture quality is actually really good. I'm just going to leave some actual footage from here. Also keep in mind that this is probably not the best time to uh, test this. Uh, this is uh, the middle of January, so most of my footage is going to be like sort of like dull, you know, winter weather, but uh, uh, hopefully you can see the difference. And of course, uh, uh, my video is his full HD, so you are not going to see the entire 4K footage. Uh, there is a smart IR functionality, so it, the camera would uh, produce a better nighttime footage than most of the other cameras. Uh, it, it has uh, audio recording as well. It can use the more advanced H.265 Plus format, so if you are using it for an MVR, that takes up less space than the regular um, H.462 format, so it can fit more footage on your MVR. And there is also a fairly impressive Vandal proof design for these cameras. I mean, you can see this dome model uh, survives, uh, you know, physical abuse. And of course, that would apply uh, to this turret model as well. I briefly mentioned recording just a couple of minutes ago. So you can see that uh, if you purchase a separate MVR, you can use it to record the footage centrally. Or there is a built-in uh, memory slot as well. So you can put an SD card in it and then it's going to create local recordings. And for a second, let's look at the, um, the camera again and also what you get when you purchase this model. So as I said, uh, this is the turret model. So you have this base, uh, which is a plastic base, and then it rotates um, freely around this axis and it also rotates around that axis as well. Uh, the actual camera part, so this part is metal and as I said, the rest is uh, plastic. As you can see here, if I rotate it that way, we have an opening here, so that's where you can put the SD card in. 
Other than that, uh, on the underside of the model, which is going to be mounted against the wall, you have a couple of cables, and this is the usual stuff. So you get a network cable, and you also have a separate power cable. So you can power it uh, through this jack uh, with 12 volts, or if you have PoE, power over Ethernet, then you only need an Ethernet cable, and that is going to power network and Ethernet as well. Of course, um, I mean, I haven't said in the beginning that uh, this is not a Wi-Fi camera, so no, you need to cable this one in, so this is not a Wi-Fi version. Within the box, there are a few things that uh, Enki provides. So there is a brief uh, user manual, which is going to contain the essentials and some of the mounting options, uh, how you can mount it. Of course, keep in mind that you have this short cable where you need to do all the uh, cable management and connecting the, uh, the network cable. So that is definitely going to take up some space. So you should be installing it in a place where you have a separate box or maybe something inside a wall where you can hide the, all this cabling. Or if you want to mount it in a mount like this, then obviously that mount is going to uh, provide space for the cabling. Um, there you can see the uh, diagram here where how you would install the SD card. And along the user manual, we are also getting a sticker that your house is under 24 hour surveillance. There is also a drilling template. So it's going to give you all the holes that you need to drill in order for the screws and also the where the cable is going to go through. And we are also providing an Allen key to uh, you know adjust the camera and once you fix the position, then you can tighten up. And just like with my other camera, there is also a few screws for mounting it and a plug. And there is this, um, uh, I'm not really sure what it's called, it's like a shroud. So you can uh, connect your network cable and then put this over the cable and this connector, which is going to uh, probably IP waterproof this uh, network connection. Well, actually network and uh, optionally power connection. Okay, so I have the camera connected and uh, it is set up in a temporary position. Um, so we can look at the footage that is recording outside. It is not really uh, a nice day today. It's really uh, cloudy and uh, we are expecting some snow as well. Uh, but, uh, well, this is what it can see from the garden. So, um, you know, once you connect it, um, then obviously it will receive an IP address from your router and you can just go to that IP address in order to, to access the built-in website. And of course, there is an NK Vision app that I showed you in my previous C500 uh, review video. But to be honest, the application is really good for looking at the footage on your phone, very, very convenient. But when you want to do configuration, then you have a uh, access to all the configuration options using the web interface and the one in the app is, is limited. So this is why I want to focus on the web interface now. So on the main interface uh, we can see the usual um, control functions. So you can change the aspect ratio or you can also change between the, ma uh, the, f f uh, the main stream and also the substream. So this is actually the 4K main stream that we are looking at at the moment. And uh, well, you don't see much motion in the uh, picture, but it is actually, as you can see, it is really, really sharp. So there is definitely more details behind this than what my screen can uh, display. And of course, uh, this video is only full HD. So that would, nev that would never have the same resolution as the actual camera. You also have some transport controls here. So if you want to do local recording of the footage or an image, you can do it here. You can also turn on the uh, microphone or turn it off. I don't think it's going to record too much at the moment. It's uh, very silent outside. You have a lot of controls here on the side of which we are not going to use any of these because this is not a PTZ camera. So all of the PTZ functions, the presets, the movements are not applicable for this camera. Under the general settings, we have a few things where you can uh, control the, the screen options, uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, exposure, and uh, also some you know video details and the OSD uh, on-screen display settings like the time and the name of the device. Under the playback option, you have the option to review all the footage that has been recorded using the uh, uh, the built-in motion I mean, uh, the built-in motion detection because this camera is now set up to create recordings whenever motion is detected. By the way, this light is uh, the night vision 
uh, IR uh, LEDs turn on on a different camera so this is why you see that and also the reflection of the uh, IR lenses are saturating this part of the image but that's where you can you know review your footage or if you want any of your footage to be backed up um, I you can use the download button and uh, off camera I have installed an SD card into the device so these are the footages that are recorded onto the SD card and also you can use this small calendar to in order to skip to the you know the date where you want to review the footage so if you want to configure motion detection this is what you need to do so under events and the basic events you have to enable the motion detection and the uh, dynamic analysis for motion and while well, the first screen that we come to is the area settings and uh, here you have well, multiple uh, different options as well or configuration options but uh, I think you would just configure the normal and here uh, you click on draw area and you can create a polygon area where you want motion to be detected and you just click on the screen multiple times to create this area and when you finish then you just right click with the mouse and that finishes the uh, the polygon area so that basically tells the camera to only look at motions in this area and ignore any, everything else I did this uh, for me because obviously I don't want the um, you know the moving of branches and the bushes to affect the motion sensing but this will cr still create false positives because the shadows cast on this area will trigger the motion detection as well you can play around with sensitivity but uh, to be honest with motion detection you can't eliminate false positives uh, completely so this is something that you need to be aware of and you can define multiple of these polygons the next thing is you come to the aiming schedule and here again you can configure when you want this motion detection to fire at all so if you have a lot of false positive during the night and and you are also uh, interested about the, you know daytime you can just limit that to let's say you know uh, certain hours of the day and then you can also use the copy button to copy the schedule down to the uh, the other days and then finally you have the linkage method and uh, here depending on where you want to uh, save or what to want to trigger you can enable either the email sending uh, the notify surveillance center and the F uh, ftp upload or the uh, saving it to a memory card or a nas drive and here uh, the trigger recording you select a1 um, I mean all these cameras we are going to see a1 because there is only one channel if this would be a network recorder then you would have you know more options here but you always just uh, select a1 and then of course you save your settings and once you come to storage then you have the same recording schedule for storage as well so I just selected motion alarm and I just enabled it 24 7. This camera offers a few different options how you can record snapshots or video recordings uh, so I'm going to go through these options and this assumes that the camera is going to uh, detect some events so for example either motion detection or video tampering and that's going to be the basis of the recording so I just explained how you configure the motion detection to, either, uh, to do that so now we are going to talk about the different options which you can also see it in the, the linkage method if you want to capture images then you can capture them either to upload to an FTP server or send them to an email so you can see the send email and the upload uh, option here and in order to configure them you come under network and advanced settings and here you have uh, the options for the FTP and you also have the option for the email so what is going to happen with FTP is that once the motion is detected the camera is going to capture a few images and it's going to upload them into an FTP server to a folder there is a very good documentation on how you do that so I'm not going to go through that I've already gone through it in my FTP uh, sorry my C500 video so you can check out this post that I'm going to link in the video description the other option is is to email of course you set up your whole email server email address you know user id and a password luckily this uh, supports ssl as well so you would be able to use it either with gmail and then you can set up a couple of recipients and again once uh, motion is detected then the system is going to send you a couple of images in an email you also need to come here under storage uh, storage settings and the capture parameters and this is where you can configure the event based triggers so you enable them so you can specify here the format and you can see the resolution you can change different quant uh, sorry quality and then uh, the intervals and the number of images captured so 
uh, if an event happens and like a motion event happens then it's going to take four images one second apart and that's going to be uploaded to FTP or included in the email. The other option is when you want to record into the built-in SD card and here in the linkage method you can see that uh, there is an option for the memory card and then that memory card first of all needs to be uh, configured in under storage and storage management the, the memory card that you have put into the device will automatically appear here. You just have to make sure that it is uh, the status is normal, which means that once you select it, then you format. And there are a few other options that you can configure for this one. So under the schedule settings, as I mentioned previously, you can select motion and alarm and then just enable the recording schedule. So this is going to apply to the videos that are recorded onto the SD card. And then you, you can also click on the advanced button here and you can also configure the recording parameters so how many seconds it should record pre and post the motion detection and whether it should record the mainstream or the substream i've configured this to override the previous recording it means that it's going to create recordings until the memory card is completely full and it would just delete the oldest recording but you can also set up an expiration date for the recording so it would even get uh, so it will get deleted earlier than that if you want to re create recordings on another device, you still have a few different options. So as I mentioned before, you have an option here under, under storage management for net HDD, so net, network hardware drives, where you have the option to mount either NFS or SMB drives. So you provide the user ID and a password uh, for that network drive. You specify the, the server address and the path where the recordings should be created. And then once you have configured this and you test it and everything works, these drives would appear under the hard risk management as well. I haven't tested this functionality just for one single reason. I have one NAS drive that I'm using to back up all my personal photos, documents and everything. And as you can see, even after creating this NASware drive, it says that the status is uninitialized and it is expecting me to format this drive. So I'm pretty sure that if I create a specific user for this uh, uh, function in my NAS and I restrict that user to only have access to that folder and probably also create a quota so it only uses a certain amount uh, of this space, then once I format it, then it would not affect anything else on the NAS. But I'm just really concerned doing anything like this on my personal drive and just risking losing all my personal data. So this recording option is going to work with any network drive, whether it's on a NAS or your main computer as a shared drive. But in case you have special NAS drives, for example, a Synology NAS, then Synology has built-in functionality to automatically record data from IP cameras they can record directly from the RSTP stream. And there is a very good documentation on how you configure this. Basically, again, you create a, a storage space on your NAS uh, dedicated for these streams, and then you can configure your cameras within the Synology app. And that, of course, would work any device that is able to either record from RS, RTSP stream or if it's able to use the OnVIF connection in order to record the live footage from the camera. So for example, you can see another a NAS that, uh, that has a surveillance station functionality which can connect to OnVIF cameras. And there is a, also a separate instruction how you are going to configure OnVIF access on your Anki camera. This is all I wanted to talk about in this video. As I mentioned in the uh, chapters in the beginning, in the next episode, I want to talk about the, or I want to compare the C500 and the C800, so a full HD and a 4K camera. So show you some sample images, how they compare to each other. And also I'm going to talk about the node red integration. If you are interested in this camera, I'm going to leave links in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.